cam bearings. It's the tightest I've ever seen. <laughs> it hasn't been uncommon over the last decade to hear about lifter failures on Chevys and Hemis, but on a Ford, that's something new. The 7.3 liter Godzilla is making up ground for Ford though. These things have been suffering from tons and tons of lifter failures. The truck you see here in the video today, you heard it in the beginning, is a F-350 with a 7.3. We're gonna be tearing this thing down and put a short block in it. I'm getting some advice from a local GM lifter expert on how to do this thing, and we're going to rip the front end off this truck at first but i can tell you guys that i changed my mind there for afterwards because i found the uh, the damage to one of the cylinders so we decided just to snatch the cab one off and get the motor out of this thing a little bit of background about the 7.3 liter godzilla it came out in the year 2020 and it is pretty much replaced at this point ford's v8 uh, gas engine in their heavier trucks the only thing you can buy now is a 7.3 or 6.8 which is like a baby brother to the 7.3 it's basically the same thing we got to applaud this engine for getting rid of the 6.2 that thing was total junk i still hate it to this day when first introduced this 7.3 had a whopping 430 horsepower and a 475 feet pound torque the more you look at the 7.3 you find more and more similarities to the gm ls platform from everything from the head design to the lifter failure, this engine is also very compact. It's about the same size as a 351 Windsor engine. If you're familiar with those, you know they make really, really popular swaps into old classic cars because they're uh, compact. So what is this big issue with the 7.3? Well, I've already said it, it's the lifters. What happens is the lifter will fail, and whenever the lifter fails, it basically takes out the cam lobe and puts metal through your engine. Most of the time, especially in warranty senses, we're replacing the block on these engines. We're not actually going in and putting lifters because of how much metal contamination gets in your engine. Like I said, the one you pictured here had some scarring to the, the cylinder wall in the combustion chamber. My own personal opinion about this lifter failure also kind of translates over to oil pressure at idle. They've really been loving to put these variable oil pumps on the vehicle, which allows it to have a different oil pressure at idle than what it has at, say, like a higher RPM out on the road running. Would you believe me if I told you that the factory specifications on oil pressure at idle with the engine hot is only 8 PSI? So if you're wondering why we're having such lifter failure, it's probably not a issue with the manufacturing of the lifters. It's probably more of an issue with a very, very low amount of oil pressure at a hot idle. You know, seven or eight PSI is just probably not enough to keep these things from failing, especially when you consider the fact that a lot of these are in work trucks that are gonna be idling for the majority of their life. You know, this truck had 40 or 50,000 miles on it, but probably had two or 3,000 engine idle hours. It sits and it runs all day long at that low oil pressure, and that ends up eating the lifter and the cam up. So if you're wondering if there's only like a certain year model affected, unfortunately, this is all the 7.3s. Even the 2024 model year is still says the minimum spec for hot oil pressure at idle is 8 PSI. So they haven't done anything tuning wise to change this oil pressure. I'll probably look to them too in the future. They've definitely been paying a lot of warranty claims on lifter failures for this engine. I mean, this short block here was definitely not cheap, especially when combined with all this labor. The more you sit here and look at this head, the more it really just resembles an LS head. It looks just like a enlarged version of it, honestly. These head bolts were, were tough. You can see that I really, really struggled with torquing these down. I had to get Trey to help me hold this thing. Can you really do anything to prevent this issue? And there really isn't a whole lot. Uh, so running a very, very good oil definitely help with the life of your lifters on these engines. Frequent oil changes would help a lot. And then to go a little further than that, you may could modify some of the tuning aspects with like getting somebody to change some things in your ECM file to where it would not allow that oil pressure to go so low at idle. They do a lot of that stuff for fuel mileage reasons. So getting that uh, oil pressure up to maybe say 10, 15, 20 PSI at idle would definitely help with these lifter failures. But other than that, there really isn't a whole lot you can do. This really isn't just a Ford issue. With any newer pushrod engine, the more demands we put on the oil system, the worse lifter failure got. That, that goes along with the GM engines and the Hemi engines. This isn't just a Ford thing. Adding VVT and things like variable oil pressure just isn't gonna help with the life of these lifters. That's just the honest truth. There has been a lot of cases of lifter failures on Hemi's GM pushrod engines and these newer Ford pushrod engines. So don't just think this is like a Ford thing. There are plenty of other companies that have not been able to get this right yet. It's also definitely worth noting, like I said earlier, that this is really more pronounced on work trucks. Like I said, vehicles that idle a lot, 
everyday drivers like drive back and forth to church or drive back and forth to work four or five times a week. Those vehicles I typically don't see as many failures in. A lot of these are in box trucks that idle all the time or like this one was a power company truck or a bucket truck, just trucks that idle all day long. You guys know what I'm talking about. You guys that work out in the field, you know that these trucks literally sit there and idle in the dirt all day long. And that is just a lot of the reason why I've seen so many failures and a lot of other people have seen so many failures. So a lot of these failures have been under warranty, especially because a lot of these have been commercial vehicles, which have a different warranty policy than the public is going to have. So a lot of people probably hasn't started to have to pay for this yet. But if you did have to pay for this, I would highly recommend not just replacing the lifters and the camshaft just because of the metal contamination, the VVT system, the variable oil side of things. Like it's just probably not going to last. And that's a lot of my thing as, and a lot of Ford's thing is they have to be able to stand behind the repair and they don't want it to come back in three months and have to pay the money again. So if you're doing this out of pocket, I would highly recommend at least going with a short block, maybe even a long block, depending on what your heads look like. If you're installing a short block into one of these, I would probably expect to pay somewhere between six and nine thousand dollars parts and labor or if you're putting a long block in it, probably somewhere closer to eight to twelve thousand dollars, just depending on your area. So this is definitely something that's going to cost a lot of money. If you put lifters in it and a camshaft, you could probably get away for three to four or five thousand dollars but you're probably going to have a hard time finding somebody to stand behind that work like i said because this thing puts a ton of metal in your block it puts it everywhere all the places that you don't want metal overall the 7.3 really isn't that bad i don't want you guys to think that i'm just straight up hating on the 7.3 i just want you guys to understand that this is a old school engine it has lifter failure just like we've seen on the old 350s and the ls engines and the hemis and everything else that has had this style of lifter we have made the oil system a whole whole lot more complex and we're dependent on that oil system to you know keep this lifter's life at 200, 250,000 miles at seven or eight PSI at idle, and it's just not gonna happen. Hopefully Ford comes out with some kind of a software update in the future that will maybe correct this oil pressure. Uh, with the amount of money that they've spent on it, I'm surprised they already have. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap us up for this video. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. If you hadn't already liked the video, go smash that like button for me, and I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace out.